Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Binacle Inspiration Series. This one is of course all about the BioCup 2019, and this episode will be the second last episode we do for the preliminary round. Of course I will do another one once the preliminary round has concluded. At the moment we are about a week in to the preliminary round, so if you are still considering entering there is plenty of time, and what perfect thing to inspire you to, you know, make whatever it is that you are currently entering into the BioCup, or if you're going, you know what, actually I might join this, uh, this BioCup thing, it sounds like fun, you've still got plenty of time to build something. So so let's take a look at some of the stuff that's been entered so far so that you can see what the competition is like and see if you uh, you think you got what it takes to win. Because you know what? You probably do. Because you're a talented builder and you build some good stuff. I just know it. So as we stand, there are 51 photos in the BioCup group, which means there's just less than 50 submissions in the group because I believe there's a few other things that the... Uh, the judges have put up there for like advertising photos and stuff, but you know, close to closer to 50 entries into the Bio Cup so far, with only uh, you know one week into the competition. That's awesome! Great job, everyone who's entered so far, and also to those who are still planning on entering but haven't quite finished what they're building yet. Very, very cool to see. See, it's going to be a good Bio Cup this year. And yeah, like I said in the past, you can expect to see another episode of the Bio Cup coverage once round the preliminary round has concluded, and then you will see my sort of uh, round round up where we do a sort of bit of a coverage sort of saying okay these guys won these guys are out these guys are in what can we expect in the next round all that sort of stuff but that's enough talking about what's to come let's talk about right now let's stay in the moment and we'll talk about these mocks so we've got, got seven of the entries into the bio cup that i'm going to cover today and the first one is by ivan mitanova and is called angular drake so this was actually the very first entry into the bio cup and i was very pleasantly surprised to to see one come out so soon and be so well developed and look so incredible you know like i've given the advice before of like hey don't rush your entry like take your time make sure you you pour in as much effort as you can but uh, you know for being such a quick entry into the contest he's put a lot of thought and effort and skill into it and he's done a great job so i applaud that very nice very quick work there good sir i love the the kind of jaw design that this mock has uh, th that piece there that sort of forms all the teeth sort of base of the jaw i believe is from an old castle dragon set and uh, there's a lot of other pieces pieces like that from various other Lego sets, whether it's, you know, the animal things like that, like dragons or like wolves or whatever, or you had some of the old, like, Chima CCBS figures that they had sort of more poseable jaws for, like, the crocodiles or uh, for something like the lions or panthers or tigers or whatevers, and the jaw piece is actually quite versatile because you get this beautiful sort of shaped teeth design, and you kind of get this lower jaw, and so you can kind of build around it, and it helps kind of create this very unique and interesting head that looks very animalistic or very sort of menacing, very much like we see here. So if you have any of those sort of jaw pieces, really play around with them because they're a perfect piece to use, and you know, through a bunch of the previous BIS episodes, we've seen those been used very, very effectively. Uh, so it's very much something to uh, to keep in mind in, uh, in any future mark, whether it's for this round or any round or anything that you're building. Uh, it's a good piece to have and a good piece to use. I also love the eye design here using the system lever piece, but actually removing the lever aspect of it and just having that base there. Forms a very nice eye design, giving it that pupil, uh, and the fact that it is that sort of perfect rectangle for a pupil kind of makes it look a little bit more creepy as well, because, you know, naturally pupils aren't that, uh, that sort of rectangular shape there. It just makes it look animalistic and awesome. Really creepy, really fitting for the round. I should probably specify that, by the way. The round was scary monsters. That is what you have to be building, something that elicits fear, something that's a little scary, unhinging, uncanny, uh, abject, anything like that, and all the cool, creepy, scary monsters. Of course, this fits that perfectly. I love, too, the little lantern thing that's kind of popping out of his head there, very reminiscent of an anglerfish, which, of course, this takes very big inspiration from, especially with that name there. Very, very cool, basing it off something in the real world, which is smart, especially because in the real world, anglerfishes are, in fact, terrifying. So, great idea to base it off stuff that already exists and just take little notes from it and apply it to your own ideas. It's a great thing to do. So really, really nice work, Ivan. Love what you've done. Let's move on to the next mock, which is by MC Lego Boy, and is called the Dark Digion. Love this mock. He's done a fantastic job here, Mr. MC Lego Boy. Great to finally see you on the show after all the comments you've left on the channel. I appreciate what you've done for me, so I'm going to put you on the show. Love the little lamp that he's made here with system. Now, of course, there are rules with the Bio Cup of you can't have too much system, but I think this is a beautiful balance of that, the fact that the Bionicle is almost purely... Uh, Bionicle CCBS Hero Factory pieces, but the lantern itself is system. It's this beautiful kind of contrast between the two. You know, you look at a la um, Aladdin or something like that, how uh, the genie's lamp is this beautiful chrome gold, and it's you know, these ornate beautiful shapes, and then genie is this you know magical essence that kind of comes out of it. You know, the two are very different, but sort of similar in that respect. So I think there's some nice texture play there, and a, a very nice usage of system to really differentiate the two 
of them. It's very cool to see. Also, the Transclear pieces here, man, they are a must-have. You know, I have people who message me all the time, and they're like, you know, what, what sort of pieces should I get if I'm getting one? Or you ever want to mock a bit more, kind of advance my mocking a little bit? And my answer's always been like, just get anything, and just sort of play around with pieces, and, and learn what you're good with playing with, because it's different to everyone. But certainly those jaw pieces we saw before, that's definitely something to consider uh, getting some of, if you have them or you don't. But also Transclear pieces, man, because you can do so much with them, and uh, really, really kind of convey a lot more with your mock, you know? The fact that this mock is being supported by these Transclear pieces uh, does a lot for the mock because it makes it look more genie-like, like it's sort of hovering in the air. Uh, but you can use Transclear pieces for all sorts of different things and, you know, create sort of, you know, like as if they're throwing a dagger, you put it on a little Transclear piece and it, you know, kind of creates the illusion that it's, uh, you know, not attached to it and it is throwing it or something like that. Or, yeah, you can have something hovering or flying or whatever. You know, Transclear pieces are really helpful in that regard. So, depending on the mock that you're making, that's really something I would recommend investing in, uh, and it works perfectly well on this mock here. Of course, there are Transclear Technic beams that came with some pod racer sets, but there are also Transclear uh, system pieces as well that we see on this mock here, which you can, you know, are easily compatible, so lots of options there. Super cool. Also, love the really large uh, hand designs on this mock here, just the fact that the hands are naturally much larger, I think, actually really helps convey that scary monster aesthetic. It's... Uh, um, the fact that one part is just very big and, you know, these huge claws are on it and stuff. It, yeah, accentuates the sort of scariness of it, which is cool. And then less, less, less focusing about the mark and more the process behind it that uh, Mr. MC Lego Boy did. Uh, as I was posting BioCup stuff, he was sort of like, nah, I don't know if I really want to join. I don't have that much Bionicle. I can't really do it. You know, the typical argument of like, I'd love to do this, but I don't have the pieces. And I left a few comments saying to him like, come on, man, I'm sure you can. I, I believe in you. Um, you know, may as well just enter anyway, even if, you know, you don't think you can sustain yourself across the few rounds and just see how far you can go. And, you know, it can be a fun challenge as well to, to use the limited Bionicle pieces that you have. And he was saying, you know, he only had about sort of, you know, maybe five or six Bionicle sets, not really that much. You know, a few of them are like Mictoran and stuff. So, you know, <laughs> he does have a very limited part selection. But I really applaud him for kind of ignoring that and going, you know, you know what, I'm, I'm going to have fun in this contest. I'm going to enter anyway. And, you know, even if I don't get any further, who cares? I'm, I'm just in it to have fun. Um, so really, really good sportsmanship from him there. I really appreciate that. Um, great that he's ignored his own limitations as well and gone, no, you know what, even if I don't have a lot of pieces, let's see what we can make. And then he's also used his system skills to his advantage here with that really awesome lantern design. So he's played to his strengths and he's ignored his, uh, uh, his faults or ignored any sort of excuses that could have got in the way of him building. And you know, as a result, he's having fun, and he's made a fantastic mock as a result. So, so really good job sort of overcoming your adversities there. I really seriously appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Um, looking forward to seeing what you do in the next round, because um, I'm liking what you've made. I'm sure you'll make it through. Anyway, let's move on to the next mock. This is by Eclipse Caller and is called Zufalia. So there's a lot going on that makes this mock super scary and kind of unhinging, a little bit uh, abject. I've mentioned that uh, that concept before in the last BioCup video. I won't go into what that means because I explained it a bunch in a lot of detail in the last one. So if you're like, what, what, can you tell me more about that? Go to the last video. You can, uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a massive long description about it there. You can see it there. But um, yeah, all the things that are working very well here are the kind of repeated legs, you know, the fact that they're all different blades and they're just sort of this little scrawly little creepy little bug legs and stuff like that. The colors as well, those uh, Karapa armor pieces and the gold and stuff, kind of has this sort of weird kind of marbled effect to it that's, they're kind of gross colors too, it's just like this black and this sort of really kind of mucky, gross, like orangey yellow, and it's just an unsettling color in general, and it, it kind of looks sort of slightly dirty, slightly gross, very kind of bug-like in that regard. Uh, so, you know, the color combined with the legs, combined with the shape of the eyes as well. I believe those are Glatorian heads, and the fact that uh, the bit where you would insert the mask kind of forms the pupil. He's just this kind of weirdly shaped pupil and this odd eye. He looks kind of, uh, I don't know, he has this funky expression to him. He kind of looks a little bit gross, a little bit kind of like, meh, meh, or something. <laughs> That's the only word I can use to describe it is, meh. Um, it's cool. Uh, really nice expression there with the eyes. So, yeah, the eyes, the legs, the color. And even the fact that this is just a massive bug, like you can see his hand there in the picture, the thing is huge, that's terrifying. So all those different aspects working together there, I think actually really serve the mock because it makes it look abject, it makes it look scary, it makes it look a bit unnerving and a bit weird because it's just like, this this big old mosquito bug guy should not be this big, he should not have this many creepy legs, his colors are just a bit off and like, oh, it's weird. But I think that's perfectly fitting the theme in a really unique and awesome way. So I think uh, Mr. Mr. Eclipse Caller here has done a fantastic job at really nailing uh, a lot of different things, kind of creating this perfect storm that's uh, really making this mock pop. It's awesome to see. 
So yeah, a lot, a lot of great designs. I kind of covered them all already, but it's awesome how they're all working together to feed into the one thing. And especially, too, how all these armor pieces kind of perfectly flow into one another. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Really, really good to see. So um, a, a brilliant mock, great execution, great job uh, having everything work together there to create that sort of unnerving, scary look to it. Really cool. And the next mock is by Anthropos Michanes and is called Angular Bug. So this is another mock that is actually based off an angular fish. So interesting to see that a couple of people have uh, actually done that. That's been inspiration for a few people there. So maybe that's something that you yourself want to consider uh, looking into there. This kind of puppet master concept, uh, like he's given the little story here, that uh, monster that uses fake Toa or Matoran at the end of their tail to kind of lure in prey in sort of darker dungeons and things. Really awesome idea. The idea of like a marionette or some kind of puppet master thing like that is actually kind of unnerving and unhinging and creepy and scary and very, again, very fitting for the theme. So really awesome idea there and a brilliant execution too. You know, just big eyes, big horns, you know, a scary sort of uh, clawed feet design here and this big long tail that feeds into a little Matoran's brain like that. That's, uh, that's, that's the stuff of horror movies, man. That's super cool and, and super, super fitting for the Scary Monsters theme here. Really cool concept and, uh, yeah, really unnerving, that Puppet Master thing. That can be quite scary. You, you do see that in a few sort of video games and uh, board games and all sorts of different things, that kind of Puppet Master thing. It's a, an, an interesting trope to play off of there, so pretty cool. And again, you know, look at you look to your video games, look to your movies. They'll have cool concepts like that that you can kind of branch off of yourself. So very, very cool. Nice uh, nice concept there and a lot of good stuff working to, together. And that's the thing too. Definitely a really strong concept can really help push your mock forward as well. So if you've got a really strong concept like that, you know, good job. You've, uh, you're you going to do well. Really nice work. Let's move on to the next mock. And this is by Marks8418 and is called It. What I love about this is the big awesome head design that it's got. It's simply using one of those invasion from below kind of eggplant things that sort of hatched the little jumper guys. And that's his head. He's just a big flower with this red thing in the middle. It's creepy, man. <laughs> it's like, you should not have a flower on your head and that should not be your head, but that is what you have. And what? You know, it's cool. It's a really unique concept and it looks fantastic. And I think that alone actually really helps with the scary monsters idea, the fact that for the most part, he is this pretty normal dude, this sort of silver looking warrior with uh, an interesting chest design, cool shoulders and stuff like that. Then he's got a plant on his head and it's like, whoa, 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 this is, this is a bit weird. It kind of reminds me of like uh, Starro from DC, how he can kind of take over people by adding the sort of uh, starfish thing on their heads and kind of mind controlling them and taking them over. It kind of reminds me of that. Like maybe there's some kind of plant sickness thing that or parasite or something that's kind of taken people over. Uh, and it's just that, it's just a thing that goes over the top of the head and boom, it's got them and now they're kind of brainwashed. Um, I think that's a, a, an awesome concept and whether or not that's what he was intending to do on this mock, uh, it very much looks like that. So really cool idea and uh, an interesting concept that it is that it's, it's that uncanny thing I was talking about of like, for the most part, it's pretty normal and similar and understandable and something you can relate to. Cause that's oh, a big Titan Toa kind of looking dude. Also, oh, he's got a flower on his head. That's kind of creepy. But then other creepy things like the, you know, the, the sort of tentacles coming out of his back there, you know, tentacle, Doc Ock, that sort of stuff. You know, it's a little bit more of a scarier concept, a little unique and stuff. It's pretty fitting. So pretty cool. So yeah, little, little, little stuff like that. You know, you don't have to have the whole mock be a big scary monster demon or, you know, some creative use of the concept or whatever. It is just as simple as that, you know, putting tentacles on, giving him a unique different head that's a little out there and a little different and you've got a solid uh, concept for the contest. Pretty cool to see. The next mock we've got is by Ron Falkers and is called The Eye Devourer. So this mock takes some pretty heavy inspiration from Pan's Labyrinth, which is a, an awesome old movie where one of the characters actually has this sort of design of their eyes are on their hands and he kind of holds them up to his head like that. And he, of course, has, I believe, no eyes on his head and he just uses his hands like that. It's a pretty awesome concept, kind of very scary and unhinging. And so awesome that he's taken some heavy inspiration from that, uh, from that movie there because it's perfectly fitting for a scary monster theme like this and yeah using those tires like that and then adding the sort of tan uh pins into them is a great way of kind of creating the eye design and the pupil and everything it's very fitting very unnerving very unhinging and it's awesome to see and then i love the tongue too using that uh that uh, sort of wiry piece that came with a, a bunch of like the Toa Mari and a few other sets as well. Uh, it's perfect for a really, really long tongue and, and that part itself can naturally just sort of curve just, uh, you know, whether you've put it into the set that it came with and when you eventually take that set apart, it's still kind of curved just because it's been like that for a few years. So it kind of has that natural curve to it and it is just this very long tongue, which is just a little bit more longer than it should be and that kind of helps uh, accent that scary nature to it, which is awesome to see. 
So yeah, cool to see that he's riffing off of uh, some really good inspiration and uh, using pieces to to their benefit to, to make things look a little bit scarier and more unhinging. And the colour scheme too, especially using that head which has that sort of white and black marbled texture to it. It's the Carapa head but in black and white that came on one of the uh, Lego system binocle play sets. That part is, I don't know, just the way the black transitions into the white, there's something kind of odd about it to me. I don't know, it creates this sort of milky white to it that looks sort of not ghost-like, but it, it has this unnerving look to it, almost almost like it's being infected, or it's sort of not quite living or dead, kind of zombie-like in some manner. Um, I think that part alone is a really good thing to use on a mock that is sort of uh, horrific, scary, monster-like. Uh, just, I don't know, there's something unnerving about that colour, which is beautiful and very fitting for this, and I love it, but uh, yeah, something about it, it's cool. So yeah, great colour scheme for it too. Let's move on to the second last mock in this episode. This is by Mr. Cup of Fail, and is called Caramorph. So this was based off some concept art, which I think is another great idea to do, is to just Google, like often I'll do that if I'm looking for, you know, ideas with uh, characters or, you know, binocles I'm making or, or system or something. Often looking up concept art for, you know, a video game or for a movie or just for characters or just just Googling concept art or whatever can be a really cool thing because there's some really awesome concepts that, you know, were being considered for movies or games or whatever sort of medium, uh, but didn't quite fit the mark and, you know, there's some really cool concepts that, that you can easily rip off of and play around with and explore further. And, you know, this concept art here that we're seeing is terrifying, <laughs> but super cool. Uh, and, uh, you know, concept art can be one of the perfect things for uh, getting a bit of inspiration there. So you can see, of course, you know, heavy inspiration from that and how that's been translated into Bionicle here. The really unique shape, this sort of legs and the tail, but being held up by other additional sort of appendages and things is awesome, a really unique sort of frame to the mock, but also cool how it does have this sort of parasite look to it, like it's kind of being infected, or it's almost sort of zombie-like. That being aided with these stark white eyes that have been put on this Karapa head here is awesome because they look sort of hollow and undead, like his eyes have kind of rolled over or something, and he's, yeah, it looks very zombie-like, and you know, that simple addition does a lot for the mock, and yeah, makes it look undead, makes it look scary and unnerving, it's cool. And also this big tongue that kind of flows even further down than the head and kind of goes into uh, kind of its chest and stuff. Like, oh, that's very creepy. But I love how he's used the uh, the crater there, as well as a crana below. I didn't realize that. Um, but just the color scheme that the crater piece had, kind of this mix between orange and red, kind of looks very like internal organs and stuff. And it's terrifying. It's creepy. It's weird. But a uh, very nice use of that part there because uh, the colors there perfectly fit what he's intending to build. Uh, just super cool to see. And once again, we see that Karapa armor being used, as well as uh, a lot of dark tan, which complements it very nicely. Those sort of colors, yeah, again, fit the concept well, like I was mentioning before. So super cool. And the final mock we've got today is by Cameron and is called Watcher in the Night. I love this mock. I think it's super, super unique and super, super cool. It uses a whole bunch of mixer eyes here to just be this big old golem that's made of eyes. It's terrifying and weird, but awesome. And the thing I love about it too is the fact that it uses so many mixer eyes. Because, you know, if you're like me, you bought most of the Mixel sets because they had really good pieces and they were fairly cheap sets and Mixel joints are just brilliant and fun to use. You got a lot of Mixel eyes with them, whether they were these ball joint eyes or sort of the one by one eye pieces or any of the other different variations of eyes. You have a lot of them laying around. And heck, Pick a Brick even gives you the options of buying eyes and, you know, they probably are fairly cheap on Bricklink as well. And, you know, yeah, maybe maybe you did do an entire cup filled with uh, Pick a Brick Mixel eyes or something you probably have a lot of them, or they're just easy to come by. And the fact that Cameron has been able to put them into a mock like this that actually looks really unnerving and scary because of it is really cool, because I always look at those eyepieces and I go, the kind of stuff I build, I don't really tend to use those sorts of eyes, and if I did, I'd rather not use that piece, I'd rather try and make my own custom eye or something. Um, so it's not that they're a useless part to me, because I, you know, I could find a use for them in the future, but I just kind of haven't yet, you know? Um, so I love the fact that Cameron has kind of capitalized off of that and gone, you know, these are a fairly useless part, or at least I view them as a not as easy to use piece. And he's going, well, I'm going to make a mock specifically using a bunch of them then. Uh, and to really great avail too, because uh, it is super creepy, it is super unhinging, and it's this big giant eye golem, you know. <laughs> I should not be coming together and making a giant, you know, monstrosity like this, but yet they are, and it looks super cool, and it seems perfect for a, a horror movie or something, it's great. And the fact that they're all sort of held together by nets as well is cool because, you know, the nets almost look a little bit fragile and it kind of kind of starts to paint this picture of like, oh god, are those nets going to break and I'm going to have a bunch of eyes rolling around on the floor? Like, that's gross. <laughs> so I kind of like that, uh, that sort of, uh, it's kind of leaving you with a little bit of room to have a bit of a think. I like that. 
Yeah, uh, speaking of giving you a little bit of room to think, the big old tire piece that's sort of at the top there, kind of kind of resembling a head, but also could be resembling a mouth or something. I really like that, the kind of ambiguity of that, of you're not quite sure if it is an eye or if it is a head or if it is the eye of the mock, maybe all those eyes he doesn't actually see with, he just collects eyes and his eye is just this gaping hole, or if it is just that it has a weird hole or something on it. I don't know what it is, and I like that. There's that ambiguity of it. It leaves you thinking, and you go like, what, what is that? And that makes it creepier because that uncertainty makes you question stuff. There's a, there's a quote which I really like, which is, we see more in the dark than we do in the light, which is the idea of, you know, when you're in a, a pitch black room, your mind starts to come up with all these concepts of like, someone's in it to kill me. There's a monster over there. I heard a noise and it's pitch black. Clearly someone's trying to kill me or scary monsters exist, blah, blah, blah. You know, when you're not too sure of something, your mind starts to make up stories about what it could be. And it can often jump to conclusions of it's probably something bad. So often ambiguity can be really good because you start to fill in the gaps and you start to put your own experiences into it and go, uh oh, this is going to be bad. Um, whereas if it's blatantly thrown at you, you might be like, oh, yeah, no, it's fair, whatever, and kind of dismiss it. But if uh, you get a bit of room to think there, you go like, oh, I'm not so sure. And you know, that's why movies that do that, where there is that sort of moral gray area, um, they can often be cooler because uh, it leaves you thinking. And I like that. So a really nice addition there on this mock there, Cameron. Really cool. And that's it for the BioCup uh, episode that we've got today. Like I said, I'll be doing another one very, very soon, probably next week. And then very soon after that, you can expect the uh, fun-filled latest edition to the BioCup coverage, which I didn't do last year, but it's a, a fun little edition that I definitely want to do of sort of uh, going into a little bit more detail, announcing... Well, I, I won't specifically be announcing the winners and stuff, but I'll, you know, cover the winners, cover everything that's happened so far, and do all that sort of stuff. It's a little hard to explain what that video is, you'll just have to wait and see, but get excited, because it'll be a funny, fun, good episode. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. Anyway, thank you very much. If you haven't joined the BioCup yet, you've still got time. Head on over to the Flickr group right on now. Uh, read up a bit on what you have to do for the round, as well as uh, read up a bit on uh, the Meet the Judges page, because you can learn all sorts of stuff about them. Uh, and... All sorts of other things, you know, check out some of the other entries into the BioCup and anything else, yeah. And be sure to check the links in the description to all of the people that have been featured in this episode because links to their stuff are there. You can see some of the other awesome stuff that they've made. They're all talented builders. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Join the BioCup!